the Cambridge Theatre, and as far as I can recall, it was the first time that um, a performance of this kind on another continent had appeared in, in, the, in the West End. We both were profoundly both moved and interested by it. Alicia Markova was in the audience with Anton Dolin, so two very famous ballet dancers. He had the high society going. He was invited to go and have tea with the, the Queen Mother, Queen Mary. Indian dancers in a, in a West End stage for two weeks, this would be unheard of now. It was so packed uh, and so sold out that they had to extend the season by another two weeks. And there were queues outside. We also saw the immense power and strength of this eagle dance, uh, which was visually a, uh, an extraordinary thing, uh, thing to see. This was a revelation to us that here was a whole area of, of artistic and aesthetic culture that we had never encountered before. And I think um, it was also rather humbling in the fact that um, we in the West had perhaps something to to learn. He really, again, changed the way Indian dance was presented on the stage. He cut the longer numbers because he knew people wouldn't be able to sustain the attention. He put in an interval, so he brought kind of Western te techniques, if you like. He put the musicians on stage. He introduced the item, something that people have done now for a long time. He spoke about each of the items and he showed some of the Abhinaya gestures before he did them. But I think it's very evident both from, you know, well, the range of material that we have, and particularly in the programmes, that there was a real sense of trying to educate the public. Um, there are explanations of the different dance styles in the programmes. Um, and I think, you know, we need to be aware that there was an audience that probably were not well informed, and they became better informed. The Times of, of London, as it was called then, and other uh, papers had their reviewers there. Their reviews are very good but they didn't really know anything about Indian dance. So uh, when I say strangely, they would use vocabulary such as um, the, the noise of the musicians or uncommon instruments because nobody knew what they were. Most of the reviews uh, in the press are very enthusiastic. Um, and certainly um, he was very much admired as an individual. Um, we in our collection, we have sort of large uh, collections of uh, press cuttings. We store them with our programme, so one sort of goes through different areas to find uh, this material. But the praise about him was unanimous. He was always compared to a god because of this extraordinary presence on stage and his beauty. Everybody talked about his beauty, his physical beauty. These reports by, uh, I think it's best to describe him as a dance enthusiast, Lionel Bradley. And he went and saw absolutely everything in um, London theatre in terms of dance. He also attended a lot of concerts. Um, but not only did he go to these things, he then wrote reports for all his friends. Um, I would say it was like a blog before blogs existed. Well, what he did actually was actually write on the bottom as to who he was sending it to. And there's often um, several names. So here it's going to Miss Whelan and then to Chris Cooper. So one person would send it on to the next person and then they came back. So Lionel Bradley goes and sees Ram Gopal when he arrives, uh, first of all, in London. Uh, so this is, of course, at the Aldwych Theatre. This was a fascinating show and well worth a second visit, even without a change of programme. So you're getting far more information than you would actually get in a review. Um, and what I find lovely is here is a man who probably doesn't know a great deal about South Asian dance, uh, discovering it. We were interested to go because while we were very open to, uh, to knowledge and ideas about the Indian subcontinent, it was really mainly in the polit political sense in that we naturally both wanted supported in, the demand for Indian independence, which had only just been granted. Um, and so when we um, saw the, this performance by Ran Gopal, it was a revelation to us of, of an entirely fresh and new artistic culture that we had not encountered before. We can see as we go back, if you analyse the reviews, by the 50s, people were beginning to understand a bit more about the dance, so the reviews are a little bit more knowledgeable rather than this kind of slightly still orientalist view of the exotic dancer on stage, which we do see in the early reviews. 
And then he will say, actually, of course, what was so marvellously impressed upon one was the strong winged bird springing into flight. Gopal had long narrow wings fastened along the whole length of his arm and the headdress suggesting a beak. Some people have uh, declared that his representation of flight to be far superior to Li Fa's in the, his ballet Ika. So Nijinsky came to the theatre in London to see Ram Gopal dance. Ram, of course, knew about him. He was legendary himself. In fact, Ram was often called uh, the Indian Nijinsky by critics. They, they were very, very good. And I mean, he, was, he, he had the big show in London. He was at the Adelphi at one time. Then also, of course, he did the big one at the Royal Festival Hall, the Taj Mahal which absolutely made him overseas. I was introduced to him. He was all in costume, and I was absolutely overwhelmed by this sort of god, <laughs> all this gold and bangles and jewellery on his hands and everything. And, and he said, well, I'm just going to meditate before I go on stage, so you better bugger off. <laughs> and I thought, hello, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. When I saw him practising, at his house in Chelsea, um, which I actually preferred, funnily enough, to seeing him dance on the stage because he was there in front of me. And then he'd strap on the uh, bells on his ankles and his wrists, he'd put on a tape and he'd start dancing. And it was mesmerizing. I mean, it really was. And I'd, I said to him, Ram, when you're dancing, you don't seem to be here. And he said, darling, when I dance, I'm with God. And it was said without any pretension or anything. And you could see he was somewhere else. So Alicia Markova, as I said, was at his early performances in London. He asked her to dance with him. Now, this wasn't then to be realized till, the 19, till 1960, when they, he choreographed a Radha Krishna duet, a little bit like the Pavlova um, Shankar, Ude Shankar duet. I think he certainly had that in mind. Alicia said, oh, she said, I'd love some fish and chips. So they were sitting eating fish and chips in a costume. And then when, when they said, you know, 20 minutes now or so on, they just put this aside. And he said then that Alicia and himself, they were suddenly transformed. And, and I said, good God, one minute fish and chips and then next minute, you know. But, but it was amazing, the toddler starting, and he would tra be transferred, completely changed, and his face would change, and it was like, really, another person. And when he went on the stage, he was really he floated on, most, most extraordinary. Felix Topolsky also sat in the wings, and then he later created a, um, I think it's about an eight-foot painting of Ram, which is now in the London Portrait Gallery. He knew Topolsky very well, and they were good friends. And uh, that, that, but he, he didn't really, he, never, he didn't tell me about him. It's very interesting, really, he, until it was finished. And then I saw it, and I thought it was really quite magnificent. And uh, he kept it with him all the time. Even when he went to France in travel, he would go with him. His Katakali was the first training, he had the really strict, strict Katakali training. And then he did do quite a bit of Kathak, and then after the war he trained in, in Bharatanatyam, and so really covered all those styles, and would perform in those styles. Uh, no, Ram's father, my grandfather, he was, um, he was very disapproving of uh, Ram's choice of career, and um, he just thought it was a waste of time and energy and money and that he should find something much more, you know, useful to do than dancing. So, uh, he, no, he, I don't think he ever came round to that, you know, to accept that Ram was a dancer. I think it was associated with, um, you know, the Nautch girls and, and temple dancers and so forth. And um, my grandfather was a bit, you know, puritanical in that way. I think his patron as a young, as a young adolescent was the Maharaja of Mysore's brother. He lent Ram costumes, cloth and jewellery to dance in. And Ram said, how can I repay you? And he said, you can repay me by taking our wonderful Indian dance to the West and let them see it. 
and he repaid that in, in you know, gold bars. <laughs> His father was a Rajput, came from an area near Jaipur. His mother was Burmese, a Karen lady. Well, his name wasn't Ram, Ram Gopal, of course. Um, he was called uh, Bassano, which became shortened to Sano. And that is the name that I and the other children used at the time. It was always Uncle Sano. Well, when my grandfather first went back to Bangalore, um, looking around for a, a nice property which he could improve on, he came across <laughs> this bungalow. All the houses in those days were called bungalows. And from there it sort of progressed and ended up as some um, a really rather grand and, and spacious, um, very nice old house, very comfortable. I don't think they, they realised in India how big he was in the worst, maybe. You know, it made a huge impression, especially in London. When he got better known and was get, making more money and so forth, and by that time, of course, because my grandfather had had to leave all his property and so forth in Burma during the war, uh, money was running a bit short and to keep upkeep a, a big house. Ram used to have visitors come there and stay and so on. So he decided that the house needed a Philip <clears throat> brought back to some of its former glory. And he did spend a lot of time and money and energy, um, you know, redoing, redoing the whole house. Um, he decided that he would be, have his own studio he used to spend hours every day in this studio, and especially if he was putting on a show. The, the, the jewellery, the headdresses, were extremely beautifully made. Uh, and the famous, of course, Garuda eagle dance, which came from really a longer Kathakali piece, and he took out and made it into a solo dance, uh, was, of course, the f most famous it, of him leaping onto the stage. I think people were sort of gasping in, in the audience uh, at this gold costume, which, of course, had gold leaf on it. He, he didn't spare expense. There's been a lot of work done on the, on the costume. The costume that Sada is now sort of presenting to the V&A, it's not entirely conserved, but it is in a state now that it will be safe for display. I mean, this is very much, one can see, uh, modelled on uh, the version that Sada is giving to us. And if I lift it up, there we have basically the wonderful wings. It's a reconstruction that was actually made for uh, the dancer, which is actually very unusual. A reconstruction is usually done for somebody else. It's been wonderful, of course, with Jenny around to talk about uh, how she approached this. The costume that I made for him, I'm very proud of because it's now in the V&A Museum. The helmet is in the museum and the rest of it's in the archives. And so I'm very, very pleased that Salida has, has got the costume and is restoring it. On hearing that it's going to go to the V&A with the costume that I made, I just feel a bit teary actually, because I feel I've always wanted to do something for Ram to make him recognised. Going back to the time that I first met him, uh, which was at Kay Ambrose's house, and she used to have a dinner party every Sunday evening for a lot of young dancers. He came up the stairs and he opened the door and he was um, in the doorway and he had a black fur coat on. And at that time in the 60s, he had his hair fairly long with a fringe and these beautiful eyes with coal around them and a little bit of makeup, which he always wore when he went out. And it was as if electric light had gone on. There was this, the presence and the magnetism of this man, it just took your breath away. And uh, Kay invited him to come and sit between us. And she said, oh, Jenny did that copy of your headdress for an actor at the Arts Theatre. And he'd seen that. And without a moment's hesitation, we'd hardly spoken, he turned around and said, darling, will you make me a new costume? And I said, yes, yes. And so for the next year, I made this costume which was made out of 22 karat gold kid 
and it was a copy of his original costume and he absolutely loved it and wrote beautiful things in lots of books for me. He said, darling, is always darling, started every sentence, darling, can you make me another one? And I was flabbergasted. I said, what on earth for? And he said, supposing it got stolen, something happened to it. So I set out again. Jenny, my precious and wonderful friend, Eternally Ram, 1985, March, London. Thinking of our Kay, that's Kay Ambrose, who lives and laughs with us, obviously after her death. Early 60s, I had a great friend called Kay Ambrose, who's a ballet writer and illustrator, and also she wrote the book um, Classical Dances and Costumes of India, based on Ram Kapal. All the illustrations of the dances movement by movement are there and they're all you can see that they're Ram. Drawings of the Garuda dance. I can perhaps just uh, indicate this uh, in the book. She actually, it, she's really notating the dance movements. There were probably at least four different Garuda costumes over the period of his dancing career. There were a few students who were just warming up at that point in a front room that had been turned into a very lovely little studio with mirrors all around and bars. The door opened and this wonderful, elegant, svelte figure with his beautiful silken robes came in and stopped us and said, no, 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 that's not the way to do it. And that's how my dancing practice began. One of the most forward-looking and distinctive things was, was the structure that Ram created for his school. Because once Indian dance or South Asian dance became more popular, um, it became very, very specialised. And you would go to one teacher for Bharatanatyam, one for Kathak, um, and you would never, never mix it. Now, what Ram did was something quite, quite different. Um, he actually assembled a number of teachers who would each teach their own style and you were expected to go to all these teachers. He was faced with a real uphill battle because at that time the community um, was very, very slight. And unfortunately, by the time that the demand or the awareness had actually caught up with him, um, his school had, had collapsed. It lasted I think probably about a year. Although Ram's school closed down, he was still very much conscious being part of the whole Indian dance development in, in this country. He was, on the, he was a patron of the Academy. When I joined Academy of Indian Dance as its director, uh, my first job was to go and say hello to its board members and its patrons. So within a month, uh, I had an appointment with Ram Gopal. And we talked about Academy and he uh, mentioned that he was hoping to revive his company at that time. And I sort of promised that, okay, as and when, if it is needed, I'll be very happy to participate in it. And I came back. But then um, two days later, I had a phone call from, from Ram and he was very annoyed online and said, you haven't sent me a thank you card as yet. I'm waiting for it. And I was new at Academy and I had said thank you to him. I didn't write to him. But that was my first sort of interaction with Ram. As a teacher, he was, what shall I say, he was quite unexpected, he was quite unpredictable. Um, it depended very much on the mood or if he was in a bad mood, he was horrible. Um, he was very, very strict. He, whatever you did, you couldn't please him. Um, if he was in a good mood, he would be expansive. His lessons would go on. Um, he was quite meticulous. He wouldn't um, put up with anything less than um, what he saw as quality. And then, of course, there was the way in which he um, taught us to move our heads from side to side, where he was said, you should imagine that you are shaving, <laughs> which, which slightly bemused the fact that we were all female in, in the dance studio. In 1999, I decided to uh, celebrate Academy's 21st 
uh, anniversary. The project was about the coming of age of Indian dance in this country. We realized that Ram was around. He was the metaphor of the existence of classical Indian dance in this um, country for almost sort of 60 years. And we wanted to kind of really, really um, celebrate that and honor him. Every evening Ram joined us and he came onto the stage in the finale and thousands of audiences and hundreds of dancers, they all bowed to him in the finale. And that was the ultimate moment for us, memorable moment for whole of the dance fraternity. I am happy to say that I was the motivating or the moving force in this because I was at the Arts Council at that point. I was the head of diversity for seven years. And um, one of the things that I was attempting to do out of very many was to accord recognition to the pioneers and very conscious that that Ram was a accorded a great figure but actually didn't have that that official status what I had to do was to assemble an enormous amount of very broad high caliber testimonials to the importance of Ram from a group of people that would be impossible to resist. So they were, you know, ambassadors, cultural doyens, uh, dancers, etc. He had been put up for an OBE quite a long time after the war because he did dance in Europe for the troops. Um, I didn't know that. He had apparently been very generous with his company and everything. And, and, and of course, there were lots and lots of, of Indian troops uh, so I built an army, Ram's army of support, and I'm delighted to say that it worked. I was very honoured to be asked to go along as one of the friends. He was thrilled to bits, and he said, you know what, you know, I think Her Majesty really remembered who I was. Well, I said, once seen, never forgotten. <laughs> and I mean, he did look gorgeous. He was beautifully dressed in white satin with a lovely white turban, uh, all satin and gold, and it was quite fabulous, absolutely. When, when he received his uh, OBE, um, we all attended a party at High Commission of India, and I called him and I said, I'm coming to High Commission, and he said, OK, bring me my jalebis. So Ram loved jalebis, and whenever we visited him, we had to sort of take a small box. Ram's legacy is yet to be matched in this country by any of the uh, contemporary South Asian dancers, as we are called now. Ram um, arrived and had up to six months worth of um, showing in uh, venues like Aldrich. And um, our current breed of South Asian dancers in this country haven't reached West End. I think it's fair to say that, that Ram Kapal is one of the pioneers um, introducing uh, British audiences and indeed audiences around the world. Um, he wasn't the only one doing it, but I think he's, he is probably the one who is best known. And I was felt very honoured to be able to write his obituary for The Guardian. It's not surprising that the coverage of his life was actually on a par ironically with the coverage in 1939 when he first came to as a visitor to Britain. But of course in this case it was a greater recognition of the, the amazing quality of the work. Dear Krishna Rao, my name is Anne David and I'm writing to you from London on behalf of Ram Gopal. Now they hadn't spoken for quite some time and then we had this letter back. My dearest Sono, which is what he called Ram. Thank you very much for your lovable and warm letter sent through Anne David from London. Both of us have gone through many vicissitudes of life. It's a nice feeling that I have been responsible to do some good to our dance art, and I'm sure you have the same feelings. We're both in our 90th year, living our old age and infirmities. My undying love for you too, yours Krishna. They didn't see each other again, but uh, they're two great, great dancers who've done enormous amount. One staying in India, one relocated and living in London. 
I would think he'll go down in the in history of dance as one of in his greatest dancers. <laughs>